For the third time in history, Alabama was coming to Auburn. The emotions of Auburn people on this day spilled over at Tiger Walk. This 10-minute walk from Sewell Hall to Jordan Hare Stadium just might have provided these young men that final intangible edge that they would carry with them to victory against their fiercest rival. It was December 2nd, 1989. Auburn ruined Alabama's hopes for a national championship, upsetting the Crimson Tide 30 to 20 in one of the most electrifying of atmospheres imaginable. That was the first time. Bama came to Auburn again on November 20th, 1993. The Tigers, through the help of a miracle touchdown pass from an untested quarterback, wrapped up a perfect season. That was the second time. Today marks the third Tide visit to Jordan-Hare Stadium. No championship hangs in the balance. There is no SEC title game awaiting the victor. But who needs that? This is, after all, Auburn versus Alabama, the biggest rivalry of them all. Titles don't mean a thing. Bragg and right are what really matter. It wasn't a game to decide the SEC championship or who would have a chance at a national title or an undefeated season. But it was Auburn versus Alabama. And that was more than enough. The state championship was at stake. And the game was being played on Auburn's home turf. Authentic home turf. This day could not have been more perfect for football. Fans had all day to prepare, and they too were ready. Crowd is on its feet. It's a magnetic and magic atmosphere. Gentle, a five-yard approach, and he kicks a ball that's going to be caught by one of the up men at the 25 over the 30, and out of the 34-yard line is Patrick Hape. The first two series of the game were a feeling-out process for both teams. But the first blood had been spilled, and the battle was ready to begin in earnest. With 10.31 left in the first quarter, it was the Tiger defense that came up with the first big play of the game. Quick snap, Alabama's going to run the end around, take the end around to Tyrick Malone, and running the football is Riddle, and he fumbles down inside the Auburn 30, and the Tigers have it. They fake the end around to Tyrick Malone running to the far side. They gave it up the middle to Dennis Riddle. He rambled for long yardage, goes all the way down inside the Auburn 40. With the first down on his own 27, Patrick Nix went right to work. Alabama showing they might flip out of the eye set. Here's a play fake to the tailback. Nix going over the middle. Pass is too high, too long, and that's interference. Tight end Andy Fuller, the intended receiver. Despite the penalty, the intensity of the Crimson Tide's league-leading defense was obvious. But Coach Bowden and the Tigers were not intimidated. Nix from the shotgun. Alabama blitzing, here's the shovel pass to Harold Morrow with a flag on the play, 45-40, Morrow 35, Morrow 30, Morrow to the 29, 28-yard line. The flag is down, though. Fernando Bryant made the stop, and the flag went down right along the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they get Auburn or Alabama. A gain of 22 yards on the little shovel pass to Harold Morrow, and apparently the Crimson Tide will be penalized here. Two plays later, Nix crossed up the Tide again from the eye set, the fake of the pitch to Davis, and he rolls out, he's got a man wide open, it's Davis at the 20, he's at the 15, the 10 down the far sideline to the 5, he is gone, touchdown Auburn! 29 yards, and it scared me to death, because I didn't think Davis was expecting the pass. Well, he wasn't expecting the pass, but Patrick Nix, give all the credit in the world to him, Jim, because on that play, it was a play-action pass. Patrick Nix was dropping back. He was under intense pressure uh, from the Alabama defense. 
instead of being sacked or throwing the ball away, he took a chance, did a punt fake. He's, he bought himself some time as he rolled to his right, and then Stephen Davis popped wide open down the right sideline. Auburn led 7 to nothing on a five-play, 73-yard drive and had proved to everyone that they could enjoy some success against Bama's defense. But the euphoria of Auburn fans was quickly cut short. In two plays, Alabama had even the score. Here's a give, take up the middle, and he's going to throw downfield. It is caught at the 15 to the 10, and it's going to be a touchdown for Todrick Malone. Well, just like that, Alabama answers the Auburn score with one of its own. And the Tigers quickly got back to work. After an initial first down, Patrick Nix went to the air. Nix taking the deep snap, pump fakes, rolls to his right, got some open field, going to throw on the run. Pass is caught inside the Bama 45 at the 42-yard line by Carson Bailey, the true freshman. Nix in the shotgun, throwing down the middle, wide open receiver, 25 to the 20, and spilled at the 17-yard line is Eric Lowe, the true freshman. It was apparent that Patrick Nix, in his last game for Auburn, was giving everything he had. Nix in the shotgun, going to take it up the middle, avoiding the rush, 15, 10, Nix to the 4, 5-yard line. With the short yardage offense in the game, it was just a matter of time until the Tigers struck Peter. Set Craig on the quarterback sneak, going to pick it up behind Shannon Robeek and in. Touchdown, Auburn! Damian Craig, good block thrown by center Shannon Robeek. And the Richard sophomore just sneaks it into the end zone. Once again, the Tigers led by seven, but the first quarter fireworks were not over yet. Oh, there goes. Todrick Malone, and he takes the pitch on the end around, looking, breaking a tackle, got outside, 45-50, he's in a foot race, and he's going to go, they're not going to catch him, he's at the 20, 10, gone, touchdown, goodness sakes alive. Like lightning, the Crimson Tide had struck again. At the end of the quarter, the score was tied at 14. The question was, could the young Auburn defense come together in the last 45 minutes of this game? give Auburn a chance for victory. On the Tigers' first possession of the second quarter, Stephen Davis once again got the ball moving. Auburn mixed the run and the pass, moving into Alabama territory. Nix loading up the shotgun again, in trouble. Rolls to his right, looks, needs a receiver, drops it up, wide open man at the 35, at the 30, to the 25, to the 20, and down this near sideline and out of bounds at the 17-yard line is Eric Lowe. Nix again buying time, avoiding the sack, and running upfield and dumping it over the outstretched arms of a defender to a wide open Eric Lowe, good for 31 yards. Patrick Nix was making all the right moves. Here's Nix on a first down. Take the toss sweep, roll out. Going to set up a screen. Pass is caught by Fuller at the 10. Does a pirouette for the 5. Rolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! 17 yards to Andy Fuller from Patrick Nix. Andy Fuller does a great job on this play, Jim, of coming back to the football. Patrick Nix took a hard shot as he threw the ball. And he's a little shaken up, and they're going to check on him as he comes to the sideline. But I tell you what, a great job by Auburn senior tight end Andy Fuller. The pass from one senior to another put the Tigers up by seven. It was time for the defense to dig in. To give the fake to Riddle. Back to throw and being sacked is the quarterback kitchen by Andre Miller. Big loss on the play. The next three series, it forced Bama out after three plays and a punt. Men are split, and Kitchens is going to carry, and they've got him. Kitchens on the keeper, and they nail him right there at the line of scrimmage. He tried to run the option keeper, and Charles Dorsey, there's that man again. The defense was doing the job. It was time for the offense to reap the rewards. 
with 3.43 left in the half. Auburn took over at its own 46, intent on adding additional points before halftime. The pass, it is caught by Goodson calling out of bounds along the near side at the Alabama 24. Tyrone Goodson for 22 yards. First down Auburn at the Bama 24. And Charlie, I believe all the time they have spent on the field is beginning to tax the Alabama defense. Tigers used up more than two minutes of the clock and positioned themselves for a 27-yard Matt Hawkins field goal. Waiting is Northcutt for the snap. There it is, the spot. Kick away. High enough, long enough. It is good! Auburn 24, Alabama 14. 204 left in the first half. The Crimson Tide would make one final drive in the first half. Kitchens to throw. Fired. Pass is caught along this near sideline at the 45. And darting out of bounds at the 47-yard line is Todrick Malone. But when it came down to crunch time, the defense held firm and forced a 35-yard field goal attempt. We've seen Michael Proctor miss his sixth straight field goal, and Auburn takes a 10-point lead to the dressing room at halftime. The Auburn Tigers lead arch rival Alabama at Jordan-Hare Stadium 24-14. Auburn maintained a surprising 10-point advantage at halftime. More importantly, keeping Alabama out of the end zone would turn out to have a huge impact on the final outcome. As the Tigers took the field for the second half, they were well aware of the ability of the Crimson Tide to come back. They knew this game was far from over. In the very first series, it was obvious that Bama had adjusted to what Auburn had done successfully in the first half. After stopping Auburn in two straight series, the Tide began a march to the Auburn goal line. Fires, it is caught by Chad Key over on the far side, and he dances out of bounds at his 44. That'll be good for Alabama first down, a gain of 12. Alabama quarterback Freddie Kitchens was making his own statement about leadership and coolness under pressure. Finally, at the Tiger three-yard line, the Auburn defense courageously held its ground. Crimson Tide would not get into the end zone. Kick away, the kick is good by Proctor. So Proctor breaks a drought of six consecutive misses from field goal. They settled for three and cut the lead to just a touchdown. More importantly, they had swung the momentum to the red and white side of the field. Tide would get the ball back after they again forced the Tigers to go three and out. Here's Freddy Kitchen retreating, setting up the pass. He pump fakes, he pump fakes, he's chased out of the pocket, gonna run. 40, 45, 50. Kitchen still on his feet at the 45 and all the way down to the Auburn 40 yard line. Freddy Kitchens on the keeper gets 25 yards and it's first down Bama. Scott Stacy was the man who finally Got him off his feet at the Auburn 40. With the ball now in Auburn territory, Alabama was focused on the end zone. From the 28, second and 10, Kitchen sets up the throw. Out in the flat, it is caught by Todrick Malone. Inside the 15, down he goes at the Auburn 11. That's a first down. Two plays later, Kitchens finished what he had started. Full house backfield, Kitchens sneaks. Touchdown. We're about to be tied, folks. At the end of the third quarter, the score read Auburn 24, Alabama 24. After three quarters of epic struggle, these two legendary foes were set to do battle in the 15-minute crucible known as the fourth quarter. It is here that legends are born. It is here where Bo went over the top where Lawyer Tillman ran the end around, and where Patrick Nix found Frank Sanders. This is what it's all about. 
but on this night, it was Alabama that held the upper hand with 15 minutes to go. The Auburn defense was hanging on by its teeth. Auburn showing blitz. Kitchens takes the ball, hands it off to Riddle, and Nate Dumpy. Lots on the play, back at the 20-yard line by Jason Miska. Senior Jason Miska's heroics killed the drive and held the tie to just a field goal. Although Alabama took the lead, the defensive stand seemed to give the Tigers a lift. Kicking off is William Watson. This one will be returned. Baker, 5, 10, Baker. 15, 20, looking for a seam. Baker, 25, spins away, 30. Baker, 35, and he falls up to the 40-yard line. An exciting return by Robert Baker, and he's been the only thing exciting offensively for Auburn here in the second half. Auburn would not go three and out this time. There's the deep snap in the shotgun. Patrick steps up, fires long. Baker, he has it, 35, Baker, 30. Baker spins to the 25, 26 yard line. Cedric Samuel on the tackle, a 35 yard play. First down Auburn, deep in Bama land. And the Tigers beginning to show some life offensively. The offense had finally solved Bama's defensive puzzle. And the Bowden magic was working again. Out of the eye formation, up the middle, Fred Beasley. He's got room, broken tackle, 20, 15, 10, 5. He's gone! Touchdown, Auburn! Tigers back on top. A 22-yard sprint by fullback Frederick Beasley from Montgomery, Alabama. Auburn 30, Alabama 27, 10-18 to play. That's what happens for Auburn when you've got a tailback that is the focal point of your offense like Stephen Davis. Patrick Nix comes out, makes the little fake as if he's going to pitch the ball on the toss sweep right to Stephen Davis, but then leaves it with his fullback, and then a nice cutback by Frederick, Frederick Beasley and nobody in the backfield defensively for Alabama. With more than 10 minutes remaining, Auburn had regained the lead, but only by a four-point margin. For the next seven minutes, each side brought forth its best effort, but couldn't muster any kind of meaningful drive. series, Auburn's collection of freshman defenders grew a little stronger, a little wiser. Perhaps this night they would come of age. Fourth and three for uh, Kitchens throwing pass, knocked down incomplete. Intended for Malone, but he was separated from the ball by Martavius Houston and Tyrese Williams and Auburn takes over. Oh, that could be a big, big play. It was a big, big play, but it could. We might look back after this is over and remember that fourth down play. With 3.14 left, Alabama would begin its final offensive. The outcome was out of control of Auburn's offense. It would be up to the defense to shut the door. From the Auburn 22, Alabama would have four tries at the end zone. Deep snap to him. Going to throw long in the end zone. Brown is there. Got it. Was he out? Yes. Out of bounds. He got it in the corner of the end zone, but he was running out of bounds when he caught it. Eighty-five thousand fans collectively held their breath. Nine seconds to go. Here's the play. The deep snap. Kitchen back. Going to throw in the end zone. No. Incomplete. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. Yes. 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 Auburn. Yes. Two seconds left. This ball game is going to be over. They had done it. Perhaps done the impossible. But they had stopped Alabama four straight times with the game. The season on the line.
everybody is absolutely beside themselves as Auburn has defeated Alabama. Nick's taking the snap, dropping to a knee. See you later, Bama. 31-27, Auburn wins it. They came back when they had to, and Auburn gets out of here with another victory over the Crimson Tide. War Eagle, everybody! The Auburn Tigers were the state champions. They have never lost Alabama on the authentic home turf of Jordan Hare Stadium. It was indeed a great night to be an Auburn Tiger. I mean, it takes, all, it, it takes all of us, don't it? Good job, it, it, don't, it, don't, it don't take an offense. It don't take a defense. It takes all of us. Team. It takes a team and a team of people that won't quit. And you know, that's the greatest thing. I've never been around a group of players at Auburn who ain't been in a game. And you win them. And I'm proud of you. you, 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 you that's one of the great ones, I'm going to tell you. That one of the great ones. Hey, be, hey, hey, defense. Hey, Wayne, where's Wayne? Hey, hey, you guys, if you let a freshman come in here and start next year, I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> I don't want any more true freshmen start. You keep those guys on the bench for about three years. All right? Yeah. right here, let's win a championship with this group right here. Man, I'm, proud. I'm so proud. See you seniors. I, there's never been a group of seniors at Auburn that deserved it any more than y'all. Yeah, ain't no more than Now, did, did Arkansas lose? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> we might be. We're, we're, I don't know. We're, I'll bet, baby. I'll bet. I'll bet. Hey, hey, hey. Let's take some days off. Let's take some days off. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Let's go to the bowl and have some fun. Yeah. 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 The grace you give to each of us, bodies and minds, and the capacity to love, to care, and to work. And all glory we say, let it be in your name, in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Fans was good behind, was behind us, 100%. Seniors, we wanted this win so bad, and we just went out and played hard. And we executed our offense well, defense played good. You know, it, we just wanted this bad, win so bad. Sweeter. It could have been sweeter there to, to finish your last game beating Alabama on type and on top of that it'd be going to a postseason ball. So it couldn't be any sweeter than that. I, I, I was just happy for our senior class. I mean, we've been through a lot. We, we just wanted to come out here our last home game against Alabama and win because we knew that was the last time we were gonna put on this blue uniform and play in Jordan here. in the stands and my mom and my, my wife and my brother and um, you know it was a um, it's been a long road with all of us all you know every one of us have been through a lot and um, they've been right beside me through every bit of it and, and you know and um, them and, and Jesus have been right there through thick and thin and um, you know and I'm just so thankful for them and so thankful for, that the Lord has blessed me with a, such a family and a relationship with him and um, you know and that's where all the, the credit has to go and I, um, without my family and without God I, I would not be standing here today Thank you.